Mikami was an ugly, disgusting, worthless loser, whose greatest accomplishment in life was being a virgin for 37 years and had his girlfriend cheat on him with his billionaire best friend, Tamura. But when he was invited for their engagement dinner, Knife Kun was ready to isekai another victim, and a disgusting creep started sprinting towards them. However, Mikami pushed Temura out of the way to save his life, but the knife was stabbed deep into his abdomen. As blood began leaving his body, he realized how painfully hot it was, but in that instant, God's voice appeared in his head, granting him the heat resistance skill. And when he wondered why he was about to die a painful death, God granted him invincibility to physical attacks along with the pain nullification ability, and began creating a body that doesn't require blood. In his last moments, he wondered why he lived such a pathetic life where his own best friend stole the love of his life, and thought the world was cold. But after letting those words out, God granted him the cold resistance skill, and fused it with the heat resistance skill, creating the legendary thermal invincibility unique skill. In his last words, he told his friend to delete his history and destroy his hard drive, and wished that he wouldn't have died an ugly useless virgin. So in his next life, he swore to sleep with every chick he finds and never pay child support. So the system granted him the legendary predator skill. With his soul leaving his body, he realized that even a magician wouldn't be able to remain a virgin for 30 years. So God gifted him the unique skill, Great Sage. After letting out his final breath, Mikami's soul was transported into another world where he would gain the greatest overpowered abilities and build his own civilization with the hottest monster girls. But before he could even move, he realized that he was reincarnated as a useless blind slime, and began testing his powers by dissolving the healing herbs in the caves. For hundreds of years, he began consuming everything he found in the cave, even though his body never needed food or sleep. And when he wondered where the food was disappearing off to, God's voice told him that this was part of his predator skill, the broken ability that allows him to infinitely store and analyze every object he eats. After analyzing the hippocute herbs he'd been consuming, the great sage skill revealed that he was able to create healing potions out of them. So he began consuming the rest of the herbs and converting them into healing potions. And once the cave ran out, he found a rare crystal and devoured it instantly. As he continued consuming the rest of them, he accidentally slipped off the cliff and fell into water. So without the ability to swim, he realized that he was about to die once again. But knowing that he can't die twice as a virgin, he began swallowing all the water to propel himself out of the situation, and swore to develop plot in this life. However, he propelled himself too fast and rushed into a barrier that knocked him back and destroyed his body. But after regenerating his damage, he heard an evil voice calling him a small one. At first, Mikami's trauma from his previous life made him think he was referring to his millimeter Peter, but the dragon screamed at him to listen already. The disgusting slime apologized because he couldn't see anything, so the dragon promised to give him vision on two conditions, and those were to keep him company and to not scream when he saw him. Once Mikami agreed, he gained the extra skill magic sense, one of the ten taboo skills in the world. Before his eyes, he was able to see all the ores in the cave, but instantly became depressed when he saw he was just a worthless slime. But when he laid his eyes on the dragon, he began screaming because of how ugly he was, and the dragon introduced himself as the Storm Dragon, Veldora, one of the only four true dragons in this world. 300 years ago, he was sealed after turning an entire town to ashes by accident. And when the hero of the world defeated him, he was trapped with her unique skill, Unlimited Prison. After hearing his story, Mikami remembered how lonely he was being a virgin for 37 years, so he asked Veldora if they could become friends. However, Veldora was a typical dumb ass tsundere, and said it's not like he would ever want to be friends with him or anything like that, Baka. You don't find that suspicious? After agreeing to become friends, the dragon revealed that he only has 100 years left before all of his magic runs out, and that this cave was filled with rare minerals because it was absorbing all his energy. However, Mikami didn't want to lose his only friend, so he attempted to use his predator skill on the barrier to break through. But the result was a failure just like his previous life. Damn! The only possibility of them breaking out of this prison was to analyze the barrier from the outside and inside. But since Veldora's skill were sealed away, he would need a long time before he could break the barrier. However, Mikami didn't want to lose his new friend, so he planned on putting him inside his stomach while traveling around, giving them both time to break this seal. 
After hearing his genius idea, Veldora laughed and agreed, glad to become part of his new adventures. But before they started, Veldora decided to give him a name so they could become a family, but asked the slime to name him first. As Mikami thought of a cool name to give the Storm Dragon, he decided to call him Tempest. After screaming in disgust about his name, he thought it was the greatest name to ever be given, and decided to call Mikami Rimoru Tempest. In that instant, a light emanated in Rimoru's soul, engraving the name into his very existence, making them a family that day. Before leaving, Rimuru used his broken ability to encapsulate the barrier and began swallowing it down. His great sage ability began analyzing the unlimited prison skill, but just then, the entire world felt the disappearance of Veldora and all the kingdoms prepared to launch war. For the next few weeks, Rimuru continued swallowing more valuable minerals and unlocking broken abilities. At the same time, he began practicing his powers against all the monsters in the cave and gained the ability to mimic their appearance when battling other monsters. Eventually, an S-class centipede appeared, but Rimuru destroyed it with a single blow, along with the giant black spider, giving him the ability to swing like Tarzan in the cave. Eventually, he was able to find the exit to the cave, and in that instant, the doors began to open. Three adventurers stepped inside to investigate Veldora's disappearance, but before his eyes, they all vanished and began exploring. This was Rimoru's first chance to finally exit this disgusting place that was worse than his face, but as soon as he touched some grass, something you probably haven't done in a week, a swarm of ugly worthless goblins surrounded him. All of their weapons were as clapped as their scrawny bodies, but they called Rimuru a strong one, and wondered why he was here. This was his first chance to speak, so as he attempted to let waves of air out, all of them were brought to their knees from the strength of his voice, and they begged him to be quieter. When he wondered why they were here, their leader begged him for a favor and took him to their goblin village. A disgusting old grandpa, that should have just died last week, introduced himself as the elder of the village and told him that monsters have began ravaging the forest since their god disappeared last month. As he looked at their paintings, he realized that Veldora was their god, and the elder went on to ask him to help protect their village. However, Rimuru claimed he was just a weak slime, but the elder told him that there's no need to be modest, because his aura stinks worse than an anime convention. Wondering what they're talking about, Rimuru activated his great sage ability to change to their perspective and saw the demonic aura he was emitting throughout the entire forest. Immediately, he sucked in all of his aura, and pretended as if this was all part of his plan to test them. The elder thanked him for being merciful to them, and explained the situation to him. A few weeks ago, half of the village's population were annihilated by direwolves, creatures that can eliminate 100 goblins before one of them is defeated. And with their entire pack unharmed, the village had only 60 warriors left, so the elder got on his knees and begged Rimuru to help them, swearing to become loyal only to him. After remembering how he was treated in his previous life, the wolves began howling in the distance, but Rimuru promised that he will give them his aid. All of them swore loyalty to Rimuru, and he became the leader of their village. As they prepared to battle, Rimuru realized they were all useless weak-ass morons, so he decided that he would treat the wounded soldiers first. After they took him to their infirmary, Rimuru decided to swallow one of the soldiers and spat him out after he was done with him. All of his wounds were healed, because when Rimuru swallowed him, he began injecting his insides with his warm sticky healing liquid. One by one, Rimuru began healing all of the fallen soldiers, and before long, nighttime finally approached. The leader of the wolves had gathered all of his army and began rushing them towards the village. However, the goblins had built up some fences around, but the leader's son told him to be weary of the slime. Rimuru told them to leave before they all get annihilated, but the leader screamed at the pack to take down their entire fence and eat them all. However, the goblins began firing their arrows, and some of the wolves died mysteriously. But when the leader took a closer look, he noticed dangerous threads that had sliced all of them, enraging him to rush forward. As he bit down the threads and launched to eliminate Rimuru, he restrained him with his threads and launched his water blade to kill their leader in that instant. With their leader dead, Rimuru told them to submit or be killed, but after a while of their ugly asses not responding, he used his predator skill to swallow their leader and mimicked him. Using his new power, he screamed at the wolves to submit, but as they began resisting, he started worrying that he would have to kill all of them. However, they all kneeled before him, swearing to become his followers. As he transformed back, the village had finally gained its peace, but the following morning, Rimuru had no idea how he would care for all the new wolves along with the worthless villagers, so he decided to pair all of them together, 
and tried breaking them up into groups that would gather food and build shelter. But as he was about to give them directions, he realized that he didn't know the name of any of them. Rimuru decided to ask the senile old worthless man what their names were, but the elder told him that none of them used names. So Rimuru decided to give all of them names. As soon as he let out those words, all of them began cheering and lined up for Rimuru to name them. The first one up was the pathetic old man, so Rimuru decided to name him Rigard after his dead son Jigger and gave his other son the name Jigger after his brother. Next up was Gobta, the only important goblin because of how ugly he was, and the next goblin was called Fatso. After all of them were named, the elder wondered if it was really okay for him to give them all names at the same time. However, Rimuru was okay with it, and the only ones without a name were the wolves, but the first one up was the son of the leader he'd killed. Even so, he was still excited to get named, so he decided to give him a name after his family name, and eventually named him Ranga for Storm Fang. However, after letting out that name, Rimuru began dissolving, and his internal magicules were completely depleted. For the next three days, all the goblins and wolves attempted to take care of him, until he eventually recovered. The first thing his eyes laid on was a hot goblin girl, and he wondered if he'd ever seen her before. But when John Cena came back inside, he told him that he was Rigard, and that this was the effect of a monster gaining a name, since they were all able to evolve. Just then, Ragna destroyed the entire wall and was so excited to introduce himself that his tail created a tornado. All of the village celebrated Rimuru waking back up. But when he later wondered why all of the wolves had evolved, Ragna told him that the pack evolves when a single one of them is named. Because of that, they are no longer dire wolves, but have become tempest wolves. The excitement from Ragna's tail began blowing Rimuru away again. But as he fell down, he realized that it would be difficult for him to run the village. So when he gathered them all together, he set three rules, no attacking humans, no fighting amongst themselves, and no belittling other races. On top of that, he declared Rigard to be the lord of the goblins, and even though Rigard had just climaxed his pants, he promised to accept this role until the day he dies. Everyone split up into groups for protecting the village and gathering food, but not a single one of them knew how to build a house. On top of that, they didn't have clothes. <laughs> Rigard told Rimuru that the only ones who know how to create clothes are the dwarves in the neighboring city. Realizing his chance to finally leave the filthy disgusting village, Rimuru told Rigard that he was willing to persuade the dwarves into helping them rebuild the village, leaving Rigard in charge in the meantime. So that evening, they set out on the wolves, and Rimuru was happy to finally leave their worthless green faces behind. After running through the forest, and racing up the hill, they finally stopped for the evening to take some rest. When Rimuru wondered how Jigger's slain brother acquired his name, Jigger told him that he was named by a traveling demon who passed the night at their village several years ago. Rimuru wondered who he was, so Jigger told him that he was a soldier in the Demon Lord's army. Hearing these words, Rimuru hoped that he would never meet the Demon Lord or his army, worried that a confrontation might ensue. After noticing Ranga at the lake, Rimuru decided to ask if he hates him for slaying his father, but the wolf told him that it was only grateful for having a new name and intends on staying loyal forever. The following day, they continued their runs through the field and sat by the fire at night for their dinner. When Rimuru wondered just what the dwarf town looks like, Gopta told him that it was their own Garden of Eden and said that there were a lot of hot young elves with cannons the size of his head. Hearing his words, Rimuru grew excited, realizing his chance to finally develop some massive plot, having failed to do so in his previous life. And by the next day, they finally arrived at the dwarf town. In hopes of concealing his true intentions, he suggested heading into the town with Gobto alone, promising to return by evening. So they began heading off together. After arriving at a long queue, two bandits appeared before them, threatening to eliminate the scrawny ugly Gobta, and thought they could sell Rimuru for some quick cash. With the bandits unwilling to leave without a fight, Rimuru told Gobta to hide his face. Immediately, he transformed into the lead wolf, and realized that it had upgraded to a Tempest Star Wolf. However, the bandits were determined to fight anyway, and Rimuru realized that more bandits had arrived for support. Immediately, all the bandits launched an attack at the same time, but Rimuru was unfazed. Ready to reveal his own ability, he unleashed a mighty roar with his menace skill, causing a powerful wind to destroy their shield and blow them away. When he was done, he discovered that the bandits were gone, and that every other traveler had passed out. 
Just then, the knights of the city rushed outside and decided to throw Rimuru and Gopta into a cell for knocking everyone out. From under the barrel, Rimuru tried telling the captain Kaido that he was actually trying to play peacekeeper. But another soldier appeared, reporting that a monster had wounded several soldiers in the mines. Kaido suggested helping the wounded men with healing potion, but the soldier told him that they were out of it. Realizing his opportunity, Rimuru decided to reveal a barrel full of healing potion he prepared for them already. But they wondered how he snuck out of the barrel. However, with nothing more to lose, Kaido decided to take a chance with it and carried it away for his men. That night, Kaido returned with the wounded soldiers, and they thanked Rimuru for helping to heal their wounds. So after they left, Kaido decided to free Rimuru, and soon decided to serve him dinner. When he wondered what he wants in exchange for helping them, Rimuru asked to be introduced to the best blacksmith in the city. So the next day, Kaido decided to take him around the city, and Rimuru thought that this place was a lot better than the whole goblin village. He would have had no problem staying here forever, but had promised to return with the smith. Before long, they arrived at the smith's shop, and Kaido introduced him as Kaijin. At that moment, the three soldiers appeared before them, shocked to see the ugly useless slime. They were workers for the smith, and one dwarf told him that Rimuru had saved them with his healing potion. Pleased with the news, the smith thanked Rimuru for his help, and wondered what he could offer in return. After discovering what Rimuru wants, the smith told him that he was under a tight schedule to deliver 20 long swords to the king by the end of the week. So far, he had made only one sword, but with the sword material having run out, he wondered just how he could manage to get it done in time. At that moment, Rimuru remembered that he had consumed magic ore while inside the cave, and decided to spit it out. At the sight of it, the smith realized that the core had already been processed into a shiny magisteel cluster, and that he could make even stronger swords with them. However, Rimuru told him that he would allow him to have it if he would teach the goblins how to build houses and make weapons like his own. The smith thought it was a good proposal and decided to agree with the deal. With only a few days to go, the smith commanded his useless workers to get to work. Thinking he could help out, Rimuru asked to see the only sword that was made, and the smith told him that he made it with a magisteel cluster. He said that the sword develops in the same way as its holder, and could become very powerful if the holder continues to grow stronger. So he immediately absorbed the sword, and told the system to analyze it and make more copies of it using the magisteel cluster that was inside of him. At once, the system did so, and he began spitting out the swords one after another until they were all out. That night, the smith thanked Rimuru for his help, and Garm told him that they intend to celebrate their success in a bar. Hearing his words, Rimuru grew excited, realizing he was about to tick off a bucket list. And as they arrived at the bar that night, the hot young elves began to fondle his slime, and Rimuru thought he was in a heavenly paradise. However, it was nowhere near the paradise you will enjoy when playing the sponsor of today's video, Tenkafuma, the greatest harem waifu building adult 18 plus game, made by the hottest adult gaming platform. Arrow Labs. In this game, you don't need to save the world or uncover weird conspiracies. Instead, you are Caesar, the most powerful archdemon, and your only goal is to conquer the entire world and build the greatest harem. Whether it's demons, angels, or regular humans, you can cultivate a relationship with all of them as you battle the greatest enemies while traveling across the depths of the cosmos to unlock their HCG. And whether you want to use love eggs or tentacles, you can use any prop to develop plot with your woman and you might even unlock their secret plot scenes. And throughout the third anniversary event, you'll be able to claim some of the greatest rewards and unlock the hottest holiday girls. So what are you waiting for? Download Tenkafuma today for free through the link in my description, and enter my promo code Third Annie Slayer for exclusive prizes. Thanks to Tenkafuma for sponsoring me today, because winter is cold this year, so this game will keep my hand warm. Stop it! Get some help. After a moment, an elf offered to tell his fortune, so another elf suggested that she reveals his soulmate. But Rimuru thought he was destined to be with a disgusting slime like himself. However, the orb revealed a beautiful young girl, and Rimuru thought she was Japanese. Just then, an ugly ass loser approached them, and Kaijin realized that it was his archenemy Vesta, who tried to screw him up with the impossible task of making 20 swords for the king, and Rimuru thought he was an arrogant sh face. The ugly loser began telling Kaijin that he was sure to lose his position for failing to deliver the swords, and began calling Rimuru a lowly monster that was too ugly to have a place at the table. When he tried persuading the chief elf to kick him out, she told him that Rimuru was a harmless monster, and thought he could go jerk off in a corner. Even so, the loser didn't know when to stop, and decided to spill his drink on Rimuru. However, the dude was a minister, 
and Rimuru thought that knocking out his tooth would put the smith in trouble. However, Kaijin decided to punch some sense into his ugly ass face. With Vesta still in shock from the resounding blow, Kaijin knocked more sense into his shallow disgusting head. Realizing the consequences that was to come, he offered to work for Rimoru, and Rimoru thought it was the best news he's heard since reincarnating. However, that night, they were all arrested for the beatdown, and the ugly loser was carried off on a f***ing stretcher. Inside the cell, Rimuru realized that the useless weakling Gobta was still asleep after 48 f***ing hours, and Kaijin apologized for dragging the other dwarves into his mess. A few hours later, with the dwarves all asleep, Gobta finally came awake, wondering where he was. But Rimuru told him to go back to sleep because he deserved a spot in the afterlife for being such a heavy sleeper. Afraid he would be abandoned, Gopta tried freeing himself, but Rimuru silenced him immediately. The next day, after arriving at the palace for their trial, Rimuru realized that the king was the presiding judge. With Vesta's injury looking worse, he asked the king to execute Kaijin immediately. And before long, the clerk announced that Kaijin was being sentenced to 20 years of forced labor in the mines, and that the others were to serve 10 years labor also. Before they were led to their fate, the king decided to ask Kaijin if he was willing to rejoin his army, but he told him that he has pledged himself to a new master already, and had no intentions of ever quitting. Taking his words as a challenge, the knights prepared to eliminate them, but the king ordered them to stand down, and commanded that Kaijin and the others be exiled from his city. After they left, the king told the ugly shitface that he was taking his position from him. As the clerk showed him a healing potion from Rimuru, the king told Vesta that he made them lose a valuable relationship with the slime as they could have had endless supplies of the potion. Realizing the damage he's done, Vesta tried pleading for forgiveness, but the king told him to go jump off a cliff. The next day, Kaijin and his companions bid the soldiers goodbye and began to leave. After a few weeks, Rimuru transformed into the Tempest Star Wolf and unleashed black lightning at the rock before him destroying it and causing the water to rise, revealing a rainbow across the sky. Realizing the immense power of the lightning, Rimuru thought he was better off keeping the skill hidden. Inside the village, Kaijin had begun teaching the goblins how to make weapons, and Garm was showing the others how to make armor. At the same time, Dord was revealing the process of making crafts, and the ugly moron Mead was explaining the process of building a house. However, when Rimuru and the others had first arrived at the village, he realized that over 500 new goblins had migrated here, seeing as the forest was no longer safe for them. When Rimuru wondered what would be their fate if he turned them away, the system told him that they would all be eliminated by the monsters lurking around the forest. Afraid of sending them to their doom, Rimuru decided to accept them into the village, and named every single one of them before falling asleep for another set of days. While walking through the new site, Rimuru noticed that Gobda had managed to escape from the cell and had discovered a new skill to summon his Tempest Wolf at will. Just then, Rigard hurried to him, having been promoted to Goblin King, and told him that suspicious humans were discovered in the forest, and he thought they had come from a faraway country to expand their territory. Meanwhile in the forest, the group of humans were running away from monster ants, after accidentally stabbing their nest. Having had enough, a mysterious girl in the group decided to draw her sword, and fire began to lick it. At once, she cast a powerful flame at the ants, knocking them back, but as one ant flew towards her, she jumped high and slayed it before slaying another. And running forward, she sliced a new ant and hacked another, causing it to blow up in flames, before stabbing it. The useless adventurers were shocked by her skill, but when a monster tried to sneak up on her, she grew weak from having exhausted her powers. Luckily, black lightning descended on the ant, vanquishing it instantly, and causing her mask to fly off. When Rimuru appeared in the dust, he decided to return the girl's mask, and the adventurers were surprised to see a talking slime. However, when Rimuru gave back her mask, he discovered that the girl was the person he had seen in the fortune-telling orb who was destined to be his soulmate, but he thought he was meeting her way too soon. Later that day, after returning to the village, Rimuru found the adventurers eating like hungry useless gluttons. At that moment, he thought he had seen them before, so the system reminded him that he came across them inside the cave. When Rigard introduced him to the adventurers as their great master, they wondered how the hell an ugly slime could rule a village. In hopes of making them comfortable, Rimuru decided to introduce himself as a friendly slime. But the mysterious girl noticed that he was saying the lines of a video game. The adventurers thanked him for his help and began introducing themselves. Cavill told him that he was the leader of their party, and Iren and Gaido thanked him for the food. 
when the mysterious girl introduced herself as Shizu, Rimoru discovered that she was truly Japanese. Cabal told him that the guildmaster had commanded them to scout the forest for monsters, and Rimoru realized that the dragon's presence in the cave was truly important after all. That evening, he decided to ask the mysterious girl if she was truly from Japan, but she wondered why he introduced himself with the famous lines of a video game. As she carried him, Rimuru thought this was his lucky day, and told her that he was also from Japan. Pleased with this discovery, she decided to reveal her face, and wondered how he got into this world. So he told her that he reincarnated after he was killed in his former life. However, she told him that she was summoned here, and Rimuru remembered that Veldora had told him that summoned humans could not turn against the summoner, and thought she was being used as a weapon. He decided to ask her how she appeared in this world, so she told him that she vanished in a flame during a great war in her world. As she grew sad at the memory, Rimuru decided to cheer up, and told the system to convene his memories to the girl. At that instant, she began to see his old life, and realized that he was a disgusting perv who could not stop thinking of young hot elves. Afraid of ruining his chance with the girl, he immediately skipped the memories of his perv mind and told her that several years after the war, Japan was rebuilt and eventually became a great country, and that he intends to build the goblin village into a similar version of it. Suddenly, Shizu dropped him, and began groaning in pain. When Rimuru wondered what was wrong, she told him that she ate bad fruits, but he thought she was a fat ass liar. The following day, Shizu woke up from a bad dream, but noticed that Eren was still very sound asleep. At that instant, she began to groan, emitting a little flame, but shortly cooled off. That morning, as she looked down a cliff, Rimuru appeared before her, wondering if she likes the goblin settlement. She told him that she likes it, but said that she must leave the village before putting everyone in danger. Rimuru wondered if she has a destination, so she told him that she was on a search to find her summoner. As Eren prepared to leave, she tried persuading Shizu to travel with them, but she turned down her offer, afraid that her presence would be nothing but bad news. Just as they rejoined the others, Shinzu began groaning once more. The adventurers wondered if she had an upset stomach, but her mask cracked and a mighty flame rose towards the sky, creating a swirl of dark clouds above them. Just then, a great flaming ball exploded around her, knocking everyone away. As they watched her in the flames, they realized that she was the renowned conqueror of flames. Realizing she would be a tough ass opponent, Rimuru told Rigard and Rigard to evacuate the goblins from the village, so they hurried off at once. As a greater flame engulfed Shizu, she transformed into the fire spirit Ifrit. With a powerful roar, a mighty wind destroyed the adventurer's shield, blowing them away and as he summoned fire dragons, they started burning what was left of the village. Afraid they would meet their doom, Rimuru told the adventurers to run away, but they thought that this was the perfect time to become Justice League, and decided to draw their weapons for battle. Gaido said that they considered Shizu to be one of them, and Iren said that they could never abandon her, but Rimuru wondered if they emptied their heads when they woke up, seeing as they had no chance with the fire spirit. When Rimuru demanded to know what he wanted, Ifrit cast a flame at him, but he attacked with a water blade that vanished instantly. As the fire dragons flew towards Rimuru, Iren launched an icicle lance that narrowly missed a dragon, but she continued launching more at them, telling Rimuru that they were determined to fight until the very end. When the other dragons began spitting flames at the slime, he summoned Ranga and began dodging all the fires. He wondered if spewing all the water in his belly would be enough to destroy the dragons, but the system told him that the collision would cause an explosion of steam that would destroy their surroundings. Just then, he saw Iren impale a dragon with her icicle and discovered a plan of his own. Immediately, he told her to fire an icicle at him, and as he swallowed it, it dissolved at that instant. With the system having analyzed it, Ranga jumped over the dragons, spraying ice around them until hundreds of icicle lances appeared. At once, the lance nailed the dragons, making them explode instantly. However, the third dragon evaded Iren's attacks, and as it appeared before them, it exploded immediately, destroying their shield and leaving them scorched like burned toasts. With the adventurers unconscious, Rimuru told Ranga to carry them away into the forest, deciding to take on Ifrit on his own. As he appeared before the fire spirit, Ifrit summoned dozens of his body double to surround him, but when they tried heating him up like food in boiling oil, Rimuru killed them with his icicle shotgun until only the real one was left. However, he soon realized that he was caught in a trap, and Ifrit began burning him in a flare circle. Watching the great flames from a distance, all the goblins thought Rimuru was already ashes. Luckily, Rimuru was unscathed from the fire, so the system told him that his thermal fluctuation resistance was nullifying the flames immediately. At this realization, he thought he was sure to win this duel. 
and as Ifrit began to leave, he bound him in his steel thread and jumped out of the fire. Desperate to end him, Ifrit spewed flames at him, but he was still unscathed. Using his predator skill, he engulfed Ifrit immediately. When it was over, he found Shizu passed out on the ground. So that evening, as Shizu laid inside a tent, she apologized for nearly annihilating everyone. And as she got closer to drawing her final breath, she decided to tell Rimuru her story. When she was first summoned into this world, she had served as the Demon Lord's assistant for several years. Until one day, she met the hero in a battle, with the Demon Lord having abandoned her and his castle. Thinking she could take her on, she decided to attack the, the hero, but she fought her off until her sword lost its flame, and she realized that the hero was just too powerful for her. However, she decided to spare her life, realizing she was merely a kid that was being controlled by the Demon Lord, and decided to take her in. The hero had given her the mask to boost her magic resistance and suppress the powers of the fire spirit, and Shizu told Rimuru that she learned how to use magic by traveling with the hero, and was even able to control Ifrit's power through the mask. She said that traveling with the hero were the best moments of her life, and was sad to see her vanish before her eyes, abandoning her forever. Due to this, she decided to become stronger, and made it her life's mission to destroy monsters wherever they were spotted. Afraid of hurting anyone, she decided to retire as a teacher, hoping to finally live a quiet life. However, her students grew older and eventually went on separate paths. Rimuru wondered what her desire was, so she told him that she was sick of this world and could not wait to enter his slime. So eventually, he agreed to eat her out and promised to find the demon lord in her honor. As she drew her last breath, Rimuru decided to activate his predator skill and swallowed her up instantly. Outside the tent, the useless adventurers thought Shizu must have recovered with Rimuru's healing potion, and Rigard told them that he had brought her a new set of clothes. However, when he entered the tent, they discovered a young kid before them, and the wolf recognized him as Rimuru. After he confessed that Shizu was dead, the adventurers thought he was actually her, but the wolf told them that he could sense Rimuru's mana inside the new body. To reveal he was truly the one, Rimuru turned into a slime, and told them that he had consumed Shizu at her own request, but apologized for not telling them. The next day, the adventurers told Rimuru that they were returning to their city to deliver a status report to the guildmaster, but asked him to transform into his human form once more. After doing so, they began to thank him in place of Shizu, and promised they would not continue as sorry ass losers. Before long, Rimuru decided to wear them a new armor and a robe calling it a parting gift, and they soon began to leave the village. After a few days, Kaijin and the goblins began to rebuild the houses, and Rimuru thought they would have a little city of their own within a few months. Later that day, he told Rigard that he would be joining them for dinner, hoping that his human form would open his taste for food. Pleased with the news, Rigard promised to hold a feast in his honor. Later that day, Rimuru came across Rigard and the other goblins who were about heading out to catch a prey for the feast. With Gobta in surprise, he wondered if Rimuru would grow a lovely pair of missiles from all the food he would eat, but Rimuru kicked some sense into his ugly head. That evening, Rimuru decided to visit his old cave, looking to try out the degenerate skill he acquired from Shizu's body. Immediately, he unleashed Black Flame and caused it to vanish, realizing it could burn down the cave. As he decided to wear her special mask, the system told him that his aura has now been hidden and that he would be perceived as a mere human. Rimuru thought this was great news, as he could finally visit new cities without his aura being revealed. Just then, Ranga called for his help through the thought communication, so he hurried off immediately. Inside the forest, Gopta was sliced by an enemy, but he managed to survive. When Rimuru arrived, Gopta tried asking for healing potion, but Rimuru told him that his face was too ugly for it. You're a victim! Mm. Before his eyes, Ranga clashed with two enemies and blasted at the trees. With the enemies unscathed, it began charging towards them, but a flaming wall appeared before it from a new enemy, so Rimuru commanded it to retreat. At the same time, Rigor was fighting with another monster and narrowly dodged her weapon. Thinking he could make peace, he decided to apologize for the conflict and suggested talking things out. However, the lead ogre began calling him an evil demon, saying that his mask had given him away as a well-known enemy. As he pointed his sword, he said that he had come to avenge his slain brothers. Immediately, the lead ogre charged towards him and tried slaying him, but Rimuru had already vanished. When a giant ogre tried hammering him into the ground, he cast a paralysis breath to put his ass to sleep and narrowly dodged another ogre before getting enchanted with her cannons. As he evaded her weapon, he restrained her with steel thread and broke another's sword with his body armor before knocking him into a tree. With only two ogres left, Rimuru wondered if they were willing to hear his side of the story. 
Even so, the lead ogre thought his words were irrelevant, and said that they would never surrender to an orc. As Rimuru tried explaining that they got the wrong person, the old man sliced off his arm with the distraction, and wondered how he managed to miss his ugly slime head. With the lead ogre ready to end him, Rimuru restored his arm with ultra speed regeneration. Immediately, the enemy cast an ogre flame to surround him, looking to burn him to a crisp. But Rimuru walked out of the fire. Just then, he decided to take off his mask, looking to reveal a great power of his own. As he emitted a powerful aura, he decided to cast black flame towards the sky, extending it into a great tornado. To reveal more power, he caused a dark flame to obliterate the rock before them, hoping to scare them into surrendering. However, the lead ogre would not leave without a proper fight. Before he could charge into his doom, a young ogre appeared before him, telling him that Rimuru may not be their enemy after all, and suggested that he calms the f*** down, and Rimuru caused the black flame to vanish. The lead ogre wondered who he was, so Rimuru introduced himself, turning into the slime. As he offered them the mask, he told them to see for themselves if he was their enemy, but they noticed that the mask had an anti-magic power, and realized that Rimuru was definitely someone else. So he decided to apologize for the trouble. But Rimuru invited them for dinner instead, as they began making peace with each other. That night, as Rimuru took a bite from the meat, he realized that he could taste food again, and all the goblins were pleased with this discovery. However, when Kaijin discovered that the ogres were attacked by orcs, he thought it was mysterious, because in the monster's hierarchy, ogres were stronger than orcs, and it made no sense that weaker monsters would attack stronger ones. The lead ogre told them that the orcs had attacked with overwhelming numbers while they were asleep. Rigard thought the orcs were supported by an unknown enemy, and the leader remembered that he had seen a masked demon lord during their attack. When Rimuru asked him how he intends to rebuild his village and destroy the orcs, he realized that the dude had no plans for the future, so he suggested that they remain with him in the meantime, offering to provide food and shelter for them. Having nowhere else to go, the leader decided to consider his decision before giving an answer. That night in the forest, he punched a tree in frustration, angry at himself for being too weak and useless to save his own village. But the following day, he decided to accept Rimuru's offer to stay in the village, and pledged his loyalty to him. Pleased with his choice, Rimuru decided to name every one of the ogres, but soon passed out from exhaustion. By the time he woke up, he realized that a few days had passed, and his memories were fuzzy. Just then, he noticed the lead ogre kneeling before him, and he told him that his new name was Benimaru. At that moment, Rimuru realized that he had gone into sleep mode right after naming him, but wondered why he grew smaller even though his magicules had increased, and thought it was due to evolving. As another ogre introduced herself as Shuna, Rimuru realized she was the princess of the ogre village. Before long, Rimuru discovered that the purple-haired ogre that was caressing him in her plot was Shun, and that the old man was Hakuru. When he wondered where the last of them was, the dude immediately entered the tent, and Rimuru realized that he was less uglier than he remembered. The ogre introduced himself as Kuro, and Rimuru wondered why they were nothing like the ugly disgusting goblins in the village. A few days later, Rimuru decided to ask Benimaru why his village was attacked, hoping he would have an answer, so he told him that they were attacked after he turned down the offer of a mysterious man to give him a name. However, when Rimuru discovered the name of the masked creep, he realized that it was the demon lord soldier who named Rigard's son several months ago. As Sawe appeared before them, he told Rimuru that he spotted a group of lizardmen traveling towards their village. He thought it might be urgent, and said that he had seen them visiting a nearby goblin village, and Rimuru realized that it was only a matter of time before they arrived. After a few days, Rimuru discovered that Shuna could make silk. However, she had grown exhausted of making silk and tried taking his slime instead. But Chen was his new secretary and was unwilling to give up her position. Just then, Shuna and Chen began to emit an aura, looking to stake a claim on Rimuru. As they pulled his slime, Chen utilized her chance and snatched him away. That afternoon, Rimuru told the ogres that Chen had made him lunch, but they swiftly passed up the offer, knowing the nightmare that was to come. At once, Sawe summoned his body doubles, telling Rimuru that he intends to scout the area and vanished instantly. Before long, Shin arrived with the lunch, and Rimuru realized that it was the worst meal he had ever seen. Shin tried persuading Rimuru to eat before the food ran cold, but he could see his soul entering Nirvana from a single taste of it. As he grew too afraid to eat it, the system told him to angle the spoon to his right side. At once, he stuck it to his side, and gobbed to swallow the disgusting gooey nightmare. 
Horrified by the taste, he began screaming in pain until he eventually passed out. Thinking his soul had left his body, Rimoru thought that Gobda had died for the right course and hoped he manages to find peace in the afterlife. After a few days, Rigard appeared to tell Rimoru that a group of lizardmen were waiting to see him. Before he could leave, Benimaru and some ogres offered to come along. As they arrived outside the village, wondering where the leader was, the lizardmen began pounding their spears into the ground, and an ugly lizard jumped before them. He introduced himself as Gabaru, and commanded that they kiss his ugly disgusting ass because he was their new savior. But Rimuru and the others thought he was a useless clown. As Shin's anger began to grow, she emitted a powerful aura, and began squeezing Rimuru like a useless balloon. Gabaru started telling them that the orc army was marching towards their village, and that the only way to survive was to serve in his army, and called them ugly filthy weaklings. These words made Shin angrier, and she squeezed Rimuru like her life was on the line. When Rimuru tried explaining that they didn't actually tame the wolves, Gabaru told him to shut his filthy slimy mouth. At that moment, Rimuru decided to summon his wolf, and as Ranga appeared before them, the ogres realized that it had doubled in size. Ranga wondered why the ugly lizard head was staring in his face, so Gabaru told him to join his army and ditch Rimuru. When Ranga was unmoved by his request, the ugly moron decided to challenge Rimuru to a duel, hoping to impress the wolf with a victory. However, before Ranga could begin ripping him apart, Gobto appeared just in time, and Rimuru wondered how he managed to survive the disgusting food he ate, so the system told him that Gobda had acquired the poison resistance skill. Immediately, Ranga dropped him before Lizard Head, and Rimuru told Gobta to kick his ass all the way to China. As the duel began, Gobta flung his spear, but Gabaru narrowly dodged it. As he slashed his own spear, he discovered that Gobda had vanished, and before he knew it, he knocked him down with a kick. Impressed with his victory, Rimuru realized that Gobda had acquired a shadow movement skill. With the fight over, Gobta was declared the winner, and everyone thought he would be the next Van Damme. Sick of their useless faces, Rimuru told the lizardmen to take their loser ass lord out of his sight, so they hurried off like chickens. The following day at a meeting, Sawe told everyone that 200,000 orc soldiers were marching towards the village, and Rimuru wondered just how they would defeat them. He thought a demon lord may be in support of the war, but Benimaru told him that an orc lord was probably urging the forces into battle. Just then, Sawe told Rimuru that his body double had come across a tree spirit that was hoping to meet him. Rimuru had always wished to meet a tree spirit, and immediately agreed to see her. Before their eyes, a light appeared, and a magical plant sprang out of the table, revealing the young tree spirit. She apologized for appearing unannounced, and introduced herself as trainee. When Rimuru wondered why she had come, she told him that she wishes to see him defeat the Orc Lord. However, Benimaru thought she had an ulterior motive, and demanded to know why she was not asking other villages for their help. She told them that since the ogre village was already destroyed, her best hope was meeting the Slime King himself, as only Rimuru could end the Orc Lord and save her forest from obliteration. With everyone waiting on him, Rimuru told her that he would consider his decision to battle the Orc Lord. Shortly, they continued their meeting, and Rimuru began to wonder why the orcs were attacking every single village in the forest. Sawe told him that the orcs intend to grow stronger, and were devouring all the bodies they came across. Trainee said that the orc lord's special starved skill was extending to his army, and that it allowed them to devour every victim in sight, making them grow stronger with the victim's abilities. However, no matter how much they consumed, they could never be satisfied, but continued thirsting for more power. Realizing the orcs' intentions, Rimuru thought they have a chance at taking them on, and said that the goblins and direwolves would make a good bait. Trainee told Rimuru that the soldier of a demon lord had summoned the orc lord, but Rimuru wondered if she could be trusted. Just then, she decided to ask him once more to defeat the orc lord for everyone, so he asked the system if he could trust her. The system told him that the tree spirit was the protector of the forest, and would always support good over evil. This was all Rimuru needed to hear, but Shin immediately accepted on his behalf. At once, Rimuru transformed to the slime, and agreed to eliminate all their enemies. However, he began to wonder just how they would take on 200,000 orcs, and thought they might be on the safer side to form an alliance with the lizardmen, but definitely not with the ugly moron Gabaru. Sawe suggested that he meets the lizard king for this new alliance, so Rimuru hoped that he would succeed. The following day, when he arrived at the Lizard King's palace, they wondered who he was, seeing as his aura was powerful enough to slay them all. However, he began telling them that he had come as a messenger from his master, and that he desires to form an alliance with them. The Lizard King had never met Rimuru, and wondered who the fuck he was, so Sawe told him that he was their greatest master who had sworn to annihilate the Orc Lord on his own. One sh 
had thought he was making it up and tried challenging him. But Sawe trapped him in his steel thread and nearly ended the ugly lizard, but the king asked him to spare his life. Hoping for peace, Sawe decided to release him and told the king that he only seeks for an alliance. The king realized that he may never find a better ally, so he accepted the alliance, but asked to meet Rimoru before the war. Sawe thought it made perfect sense and said that they would return within a week. However, he asked the king to avoid charging into war in the meantime. So a few hours later, with the king's army gathered inside the cave, he began telling them to stay away from the war until Rimoru's reinforcements arrive, but to rather defend their cave from the orcs. However, after a few days, Gabaru appeared at the palace, suggesting that they go into attack mode. But the king told him that they were stalling for their ally. Convinced that he has a better plan, Gabaru called his father a weak disgusting loser, and commanded his army to take over the palace and thought that he was the only genius around. Before they knew it, he commanded that the king be thrown into a cell and began to draw power from the king's vortex spear. As more soldiers arrived inside the cave, they pledged their support for him, so he decided to lead them into battle. Inside the marshlands, as the orcs continued making their way towards the goblin village, Gabaru and his army began slaying them. However, as they withdrew from the battle, they discovered that the remaining orcs were devouring the slain monsters. At that moment, Gabaru realized that he was a worthless moronic loser after all. And before his eyes, the orcs began to emit a greater aura, with their abilities having increased. Meanwhile, Rimoru and his companions were hurrying to Lizard Village, hoping to arrive before the orcs. Using thought communication, Sawe told Rimoru that a high-ranking orc was kicking the butt of the Lizardman soldier and wondered if he could join the fight. Since they were now allies, Rimuru told him to support the Lizardmen. By the time they arrived at the scene, they realized that Sawe had slain all the orcs already, but discovered that the lizard soldier was badly wounded. Without hesitating, Rimuru gave her his healing potion, and she wondered how her wound healed immediately. When he introduced himself, she began telling him that her moronic brother Gabaru had overthrown the king and forcefully led their army to war, but hoped that Rimoru would rescue him before he was eliminated by the orc lord. Before Rimoru could answer, Shin began saying that he was a hopeless simp that couldn't say no to anyone, and would certainly rescue Gabaru from the orc army. Hearing her words, Rimoru wondered when she became the new boss, so he told Sawe to rescue the lizard king from his cell, and commanded the others to head for the battlefield. Meanwhile in the battlefield, the orcs caught a lizardman before he could escape and began to devour him. When Gabaru screamed for his men to retreat, they realized that they were already surrounded by the orc army who were hungry for more food. Gabaru noticed they were starting to move quicker than before, and soon realized that the orcs had acquired webbed feet and scales from consuming the lizardman. Just then, an orc charged at him, but he blocked his axe and managed to push him off, screaming for his men to maintain a close formation. With the orcs drawing closer, Gabaru began telling his men that running away was not an option, and they thought he was a brave leader for choosing to die rather than escaping. Just then, a monster orc appeared before them, and Gabaru wondered if he was the orc lord with his immense aura. Determined not to chicken away, he decided to challenge the orc to a one-on-one -on -one fight, thinking he was the orc lord and hoping he could end the war by defeating him. However, the orc told him that he was only a general in the orc lord's army. And at this realization, Gabaru thought they had no chance at winning this war, but the general accepted his challenge anyway. As he knocked him back with his axe, Gabaru cast a vortex crash, but the orc stopped it with a wind of his own, causing it to explode before them. Immediately, the general unleashed Chaos Eater, but the lizard dodged all the monsters. His soldiers tried joining the fight, but he commanded them to stay away and rushed forward at once. As the monsters tried to end him, he managed to fend them off, but was knocked back. And when they charged again, he ran towards them, eventually slaying them and evading the monster's axe. But when he tried landing with his spear, the orc blocked his attack and smacked him away like a useless doll. As the general prepared to end him, Gopta saved him just in time. Gabaru thought he was the leader of the goblin village, but Gopta wondered why his face looked like shit. As Ranga appeared before him, he told Gabaru that Gapta was the captain of the goblin riders and said that they had come to save him on order of their master. The orc general thought they were all food for his belly and said that he was ready to destroy them all. As he let out those words, mysterious covers began appearing across the battlefield, destroying his army instantly. The general thought the lizardmen were responsible for the attack and wondered how he could wipe them out at once, 
but the covers destroyed more orcs. As the smoke cleared, Benimaru and the others appeared before them, and he told them that he had come to avenge his slain brothers. As a mystical light appeared in his hand, he threatened to wipe them out without a trace. At that moment, he flung the light at them, and it grew into the mysterious cover, blowing them up instantly. Even so, the general thought they were winning, and said they would not abandon the war, so Ranga decided to be his new challenger. Immediately, he emitted a powerful aura, and as the clouds gathered, a mighty tornado descended with a hundred other tornadoes, sweeping away the orc army. When Rimuru wondered what kind of skill it was, the system told him that it was Deathstorm, powerful enough to destroy an entire army. At that instant, black lightning descended on the general, destroying him immediately, and with a roar, Ranga caused the wind to stop, but upgraded into a Tempest Star Wolf. At the same time, Benimaru blew up more orcs with the covers, and Hakiru darted across the army, slaying them all instantly. The remaining orcs thought they still had a chance at victory, and jumped to eliminate Shin, but she cast a slash that destroyed them for miles, and Rimuru hoped to never piss her off with this skill. Before his eyes, Benimaru's covers continued destroying the army, and Rimuru hoped the ogres would remain with him after the war was over. Just then, he noticed the orc lord, and decided to wear his mask, realizing it was finally time to annihilate him and end the war. Just then, they all began hearing a noise, and a light flashed across Rimuru, crashing into the ground. When the dust cleared, they saw an ugly worthless creature before them, and he began cursing them for ruining his grand plan. Rimuru realized he was Lord Jelmut, the officer in the Demon Lord's army who gave Gabaru and the Orc Lord their names. The ugly loser began saying that he intended to create a new Demon Lord of the forest who would obey his every command like a useless puppet, and had started the war to make the last surviving monster the Demon Lord. When Gabaru wondered if he came to make him Demon Lord, Jelmud told him that he was far too worthless for the position, and commanded him to make himself dinner for the Orc Lord instead, so he would grow powerful enough for the post. However, when he told the orc to devour the lizard, he demanded to know how he would become demon lord from eating the disgusting dude, but Jelmud told him that the process was irrelevant, and commanded him to do so anyway. The orc lord wondered if this was a trap, and would not trust a single word of his mouth, so Jelmud decided to kill Gabaru himself. Immediately, he shot him with a powerful energy, but Gabaru's men took the damage, determined to protect him. However, Jelmud was not done just yet and prepared a new attack to finish him off, saying that the best way to make his useless life worth something was to feed him to the Orc Lord. As he raised the large energy, it dispelled into smaller ones, and flew at Gabaru to kill him a hundred times over, but Rimuru absorbed everything, and called it a weak attack. As he threw healing potions at the ugly lizard, he told him to heal his men from their injuries, so he began dousing them with the potion. Rimuru thought that Gabaru was brave after all, for continuing in the war even when he had no chance at victory and thought now was the time to support him. So he punched the creep to silence his ugly mouth, and knocked him back with another blow. With the creep unwilling to fight back, Rimuru wondered if he had some hidden abilities, but kicked him to the dirt. Rimuru demanded to know who the demon lord was, but Jelmud hurried to beg for support, and reminded the orc lord that he named him Geld. At that moment, the orc remembered that Jelmud had told him he was destined to rule over the Jira forest as the orc disaster, and as he grew ready for the position, he sliced Jelmud with his mighty cleaver and started devouring his body. Before their eyes, his aura burned mightily, and the system told Rimuru that the monster's magicules were swiftly increasing, and that he would soon evolve into the demon lord. At that instant, a dark wind swirled around him like a tornado, and the system announced that his evolution into the orc disaster was complete. Realizing how much danger the pig-rhino combo would be to the world, Rimuru knew at once that he could not allow him to live. Just then, the monster began threatening to annihilate every creature in the forest until he was the only one left. The ogres thought they could defeat him, so Shin rushed towards him, and Benimaru told Rimuru to allow them take charge of the battle. As Shin jumped high to slay him, the orc blocked her attack, and smacked her away, but she began charging once more. With the orc thinking he was about to end her, Hakuru appeared, and slayed him in an instant. However, this monster would not go down, and immediately reattached his head with an upgraded healing skill. Immediately, Sawe trapped him with steel threads, so Benimaru fired his mystical light that grew into a magical cover, blowing up into a hell flare. To destroy his chances of healing, Ranga summoned Black Thunder on him. However, Rimuru thought the attack was too weak, and told it to rest until it recovered its magicules. As the smoke cleared, they realized that the Orc Lord basically had 9 lives, and at this point could hardly be defeated. 
Before they knew it, an orc appeared before Geld and offered himself as dinner. Without hesitating, the orc lord began to devour him, and his powers increased at once. Even so, he wanted more and fired an energy that dispelled into dozens, but Rimuru absorbed them all instantly, and told the ogres that he would take charge of the battle. As he arrived before the monster, he told the system to prepare him for battle mode, and at that instant, he unlocked a new power, but the orc commanded Chaos Eater to consume him. Flashing across, he dodged all their attacks and slashed off his arm. Thinking he had an advantage, he jumped at him and destroyed his cleaver, but Geld ripped out his member to even the fight. Just then, a massive energy burned around him, and his arm regenerated instantly. He told Rimuru that he wants a taste of his meat, and began launching powerful lights, but he absorbed everything. Utilizing his distraction, the orc managed to catch him, saying that he badly wants to eat him out. But Rimuru revealed a flare circle under him, and started burning him with flames powerful enough to roast even the devil. However, the orc lord was unscathed, and Rimuru realized that he has fire resistance skill. So he told the system to stand down, and said that he would defeat the monster himself. As Rimuru began melting into a slime, he threatened to consume the orc until there was nothing left. Immediately, he melted on him and began spreading across his body like glue. The monster tried fending him off, but the slime continued stretching across his entire body until he overwhelmed him. Inside Geld's memories, he had left his village a few months ago to find food for his starving people. But before arriving at the forest, he grew too weak and hungry and passed out on the hard ground. Luckily, Jelmud had found him and offered to give him a name and some food if he was willing to become Demon Lord. With this memory, Geld told Rimuru that he could not allow himself to be defeated, as his demise may cause his clan to starve. Rimuru told him that he was defeated already and would soon dissolve inside his belly. Feeling sorry for the rest of his clan, Geld wondered how they would survive without him, but Rimuru told him to save his breath for the devil, as no bullshit excuse would save him from hell. However, he soon began to feel sorry for him, and told him that he was willing to devour his sins and the sins of the other orcs so they would be allowed to enter Nirvana. At that moment, Geld transformed to his old self and discovered that he was inside a paradise. With his hunger gone, he thanked Rimuru for saving him and vanished before his eyes. As the system announced that Geld had entered the great beyond, the hill of water dispelled, revealing Rimuru. So with the orcs regaining control over their mind, they decided to end the war and everyone celebrated their victory. At dawn the following day, Rimuru asked the ogres if they were ready to return to their village, seeing as the war was now over, but Benimaru offered his allegiance instead and said that they wished to continue serving him as errand boys. Shin thought she had the best job in the world and was only happy to make her cannons his pillow. The next day, all the monsters gathered for a meeting, wondering what punishment the orcs should suffer for destroying the villages. However, Rimuru told them that he has no intentions of punishing the ugly pig-faced monsters, as he thought other race would have attacked other villages under similar circumstances. The Lizard King thought it was a terrible judgment, and said that the orcs deserved to have their butt whipped at the very least. But Benimaru told him that hunger was a terrible motivation for anyone. Seeing as the orcs would not be punished, the Lizard King wondered what trash they would be dumped in. But with over 150,000 of them remaining, Rimuru thought they could make a great impact and suggested that they work together to build the goblin village. One ugly pig wondered why Rimuru was willing to accept them into the new city they were trying to create. So Rimuru told them that it was the only way to keep their idle hands from coming across a worse devil than Jelmud. This was the best news the ugly monsters had ever been told, and they thanked Rimuru for giving them a shot at redemption. Trainee told them that she was satisfied with the decision, and was willing to share the bounty of the forest so the orcs would get some food. As the caretaker of the forest, she said that she has decided to make Rimuru the chancellor of the Jura forest. With every clan agreeing with the announcement, Rimuru decided to accept the chancellor position. After the meeting, as the ogres began to leave, an orc monster began to ask for their forgiveness. However, Benimaru had no desire to eat orc meat and thought that executing him would be a waste of his fighting talents. So the next day, Rimuru decided to make the orc the new leader of the clan and named him Glenn in honor of their former leader. At that moment, a mystical light shone around him as he evolved into the orc king. And later that day, Rimuru began naming all the orc survivors, before falling into sleep mode again. Within a few months, the orcs have learned to build houses, and were fast becoming pros. And with their massive strength, they were able to set up structures twice as fast. They managed to lay an aqueduct, and even made flushing toilets with water and sewage systems, thanks to Rimuru's expertise from working as a contractor in his past life. 
and as the months continued to go by, Rimuru thought they were closer to building his dream city. As Rimuru was taking in the lovely sight, Sawe appeared before his eyes and told him that several knights were heading towards their city. So they began hurrying out and soon realized that the knights were led by the hero king of the dwarves. Rimuru thought his presence would probably spell trouble in the city and told Binimuru to evacuate everyone if a war broke out. As the king landed before them, Kaijin hurried to welcome him, but the king wondered why his face looks worse than human waste. Rimuru decided to introduce himself as the Chancellor of the Forest, hoping to earn a little respect with his title, and transformed into the human. When he wondered if the king had missed his way, the king told him that he wants to discover who he truly is, and was looking to expose him with the power of his sword. So Rimuru accepted his challenge, and was ready to kick the king's ass all the way to Kentucky. The king told him that he would be declared the winner if he could block all of his attacks. And at that moment, the tree spirit appeared before them, telling them that she would serve as a witness to their contest. But the knights wondered why a mythical creature was revealing herself to them. Rimuru told the king that he would beat his ass until he could no longer walk, but the king thought he was too useless to do anything, and said that he would tell him whatever he demands if he manages to win. But once, Rimuru began striking his sword and tried attacking from the rear, but the king pushed him away. With all his might, he knocked Rimuru back, and he realized that the king was strong after all. As he took a familiar stance, Rimuru recognized it as the thunder of heaven and earth. Immediately, the king vanished and nearly sliced his face off, but Rimuru could predict his next attack and blocked it instantly, leaving everyone in shock. The king was impressed with his skill, and Trainee declared Rimuru the winner. As he sheathed his sword, the king apologized for attacking him, and wondered how he managed to see through his greatest skill. Rimuru told him that he had learned it from his sword master, and at that moment, Hakuru revealed himself as the master. The king recognized him as his former teacher, and was happy to see him again. That night, while having dinner, the king asked Rimuru to enter a treaty with him, seeing as the forest was quickly becoming a city of its own. At the speed of their growth, he thought it was only a matter of time before they surpassed other cities and became the most powerful in all the world. So Rimuru accepted his offer and decided to name their new city Jura Tempest Federation, drawing inspiration from his own name and from the forest. With everyone delighted by the new name, Rigard suggested that they name their village the capital city Rimuru. However, Rimuru thought the name sucked and tried objecting, but Shin and Benimaru called it a perfect name, so the king and Rimuru shook hands to mark their new partnership. But a few days later, the king returned to the village, saying that he had brought them a gift, as the knights tossed Vesta to the ground. With everyone in shock, the king told them that he had kicked Vesta out of the palace for being too useless, but hoped that they would make him less useless than he is. The king told Vesta to make this growing city his new home and hoped he wouldn't remain a useless rotten failure, so Vesta promised to do his best. As he begged for Kaijin's forgiveness, he told them that he was willing to become their slave. Kaijin thought his talents would come in handy, and asked Rimuru to accept it, since he could never say no anyway. So Rimuru welcomed him to their city, and Vesta promised to quit being a douchebag. As everyone watched the king fly off to his kingdom, Rimuru realized that the ugly moron Gabaru had also appeared in their city. When Shin threatened to slice his ugly head, he told them that he has good intentions and was willing to prove his loyalty. At that moment, his sister appeared, asking Rimuru to accept him into their city as he was broke and homeless. With Rimuru unable to say no to anyone, he decided to accept even this fat-ass moron. Later that day, Rimuru decided to name Gabaru's sister and her entourage with disgusting names that shouldn't even exist in an isekai world. When Gabaru began to grow jealous, Rimuru told him that his useless name was enough for him. However, his words unlocked a new power inside him, and he shone with a golden light, overriding his name in that instant. Afterwards, Rimuru named his sister and her companions, and they evolved to Dragonuts. In their new humanoid form, Rimuru told Sawe to train them into great warriors, but he wondered if it was even possible. At the same time, they had opened a lab for Vesta in the cave, so he would have all the freedom he desires to perform his useless experiments. Meanwhile in a faraway city, four great demon lords watched Rimuru inside an orb as he ate the orc lord. One demon lord, Milam, thought Rimuru was a worthy challenger, and said that she was eager to meet him in person. Another demon lord, Clayman, tried reminding her that they were supposed to stay away from the forest, having agreed a few centuries ago. But she told him to kiss her white ass and flew out the window. At the same time, Rimuru sensed a huge mass of magic powers heading towards his city, and hurried out, in hopes of stopping the creature before it was too late. 
Just then, a light crashed into the ground, and the impact of the crash unleashed a great dust across the forest. As the dust cleared, Milam began introducing herself, and Rimuru realized that she was a demon lord. She told him that she came to meet him, having heard that he was the strongest in this city. Before long, she began poking him like a disgusting balloon, thinking he might burst. When Rimuru wondered how she discovered he was the strongest, she told him that her Milamai could reveal everyone's level of magicules, even when they tried to hide it. Rimuru thought of checking her stats, but thought it was a waste of time, seeing as she was totally flat and had no plot to even hold the story. When he wondered if she wants something, she told him that she only came to introduce herself. At that instant, Shin jumped at her with her blade, and Ranga snatched Rimuru away. As Shin descended with her sword, the ground crumbled, but Milan caught her blade and cast her aside. At once, steel threads bound her, and Sawe told her that it was impossible to escape from his threads. Immediately, Benimaru cast the mystical energy, and it exploded instantly, trapping the girl inside. However, Milam destroyed the cover, saying that they were far too weak and useless. As she unleashed a mighty wind, it destroyed everything in sight, creating a massive hole in the ground. With Shin wounded, Rimuru told her to get some rest. Benimaru tried telling him to run away, but he tossed him a healing potion, and said that he would never abandon them. As he decided to challenge Milam, she thought he was too weak and ugly, but he told her that he would defeat her with a single attack. Seeing it as an exciting challenge, she told him that he must become her errand boy if he fails to defeat her, so he agreed. At that moment, the system told him that she was ten times stronger than him, but Rimuru thought his brilliant plan was enough to defeat her. At once, he summoned a golden light and charged right at her, stuffing it inside her mouth. The delicious taste of the food made her lose her sh** and she began asking for another taste of his meat. He told her to admit defeat, and promised to offer her the rest of the food in exchange. It was the leftover honey he found in the forest, but Milan thought her life would be over if she could not have another taste of his honey, so she suggested they call it a tie, and promised never to attack anyone from their city. This was what Rimuru wished to hear, but he thought her brains were emptier than an old shell, so he gave her his honey and agreed to call their contest a tie. A few minutes later, as she began to devour all his honey, Rimuru wondered when she would leave, afraid she would suck his honey dry. When she asked him if he ever thought of becoming Demon Lord, Rimuru told her that he was not the tiniest bit interested in the position, as he thought it was totally irrelevant. Shocked by his words, she wondered why he thought the position was trash, so he told her that every day was a nightmare already, and that having a shitload of enemies would only make his life worse. As he began to leave, she caught him, and demanded to know what he does for a living. She could not quite understand how anyone could have more enemies than a demon lord, and would not release him without having an answer. But he wondered why she would not get the f*** out of his face already. As she grew angry like a spoiled little kid, Rimuru finally agreed to reveal everything about himself and to show her their city, but warned her to be on her best behavior. The ogres thought Rimuru was a top G for taming a demon lord, and Benimaru was happy that he found a rip-off Andrew Tate. Just then, Gabaru appeared, and began wondering who this sh faced ugly ass bitch was, but she knocked him with a punch that sent him crashing into the city. As she looked ready to destroy him, she told him that she was actually in a good mood today, and that was the only reason she was sparing his life, but Gabaru had already seen his entire life flash before his eyes. Hoping to restore peace, Rimuru told Milam to quit bashing people like a moody teenager, but she told him that she was merely saying hello. Later that day, Rimuru decided to introduce her to everyone, but they were shocked to see a demon lord inside their city, and thought Rimuru was a genius for befriending a well-known tyrant. Just then, Milam revealed that she would start living in the city as their special guest, and wondered if Rimuru would become her friend, but he thought their friendship would be irrelevant, seeing as she had no solid plot to be developed. However, when she began to pout like a disgusting kid, he decided to agree. That night, as they had a meeting, Kaijin began telling Rimuru that the presence of a demon lord in their city would make the other lords grow jealous and try to destroy them. Binimaru thought that Milam would be considered more powerful than the others, and said that it would only lead to a war with the other demon lords. In the case of a war, Rigard said that Rimuru would be made to take responsibility for it, having led Milam to their city, but Hakuru thought they were probably safer having her around. 
In a faraway city, the lord of the kingdom began to wonder who Rimuru truly was, so his assistant, Fuse, suggested that they visit the goblin city and discover for themselves, even saying that they could eliminate Rimuru if he turned out to be a threat. So later that day, he told the three useless adventurers that they would be visiting the Slime King together. Meanwhile in the goblin city, Rimuru wondered if Vesta was starting to make progress with his experiments, so Vesta told him that he managed to make a communication crystal and through it, was able to inform the Dwarf King that Milam was now a guest in their city. After a moment, Vester revealed the healing potion he managed to make with the sample from Rimoru's slime, and as Rimoru appraised it, the system revealed that it was equal to Rimoru's healing potion. Rimoru suggested that they begin selling them for some good money, but Kaijin thought it would be a perfect waste of their resources, and suggested that they reserve the potions for life and death situations. Vesta said that they could produce low-quality potions to sell, certain that they would make as much money as from the original, and Kaijin said that even the Dwarf Kingdom would benefit from this trade. As they began to leave the cave, they noticed an explosion in the city, so Rimoru immediately flew to the site. Before arriving at the spot, Sawe told him that a troublemaker had arrived in the city, but Milam had knocked his ass unconscious. As Rimuru met the others, he realized that Rigard's ugly face was already burned off. Rigard tried telling him that he had nothing to worry about, but Rimuru thought that his face was scary enough and doused him with a healing potion. When he saw the troublemaker, he realized that the ugly asshole deserved to be knocked out. Milam told him that she had taught him a lesson, hoping he would shut his filthy mouth next time. When the scum first arrived, he had introduced himself as Phobio, one of Demon Lord Carrion's Biscuiteers, saying that he was the strongest warrior in his army. He tried suggesting that they make him their king, and knocked Rigard with a fiery blow before he could challenge him. However, Milam had appeared in a burning aura, ready to burn his ugly ass. The Biscuiteer tried unleashing his flame, but she knocked him with a blow, causing the explosion. Rimuru thought her action was reckless, and wondered why she didn't play Peacemaker instead. Deciding not to give her any credits, he accused her of disturbing everyone's peace, but she tried telling him that she had saved their fucking city. Even so, Rimuru was bent on proving that he was the man in charge, and told her that she would not be fed any lunch. Milam thought her punishment was terrible, and nearly destroyed the troublemaker as revenge, but Rimuru stopped her just in time, and before long, she was having lunch in his office like a happy little kid. Rimuru demanded to know why the sh faced troublemaker had appeared in his city, but the dude called him a low-ranking slime that didn't deserve an answer. Rimuru told him that his answer would decide if they would become enemies or allies, and wondered if the ugly dude was willing to take on the consequences of his actions. The dude thought he was bluffing, and wondered how he hypnotized everyone in the city to become their lord. Rimuru told him that he was lord over the forest, and could easily declare a war on their useless kingdom. Realizing they probably had no chance in a war, the dude decided to tell him that the demon lord had commanded him to scout for new soldiers that would join his army. Rimuru realized that the remaining demon lords were starting to recognize his city as a threat, so he told the sh**face to leave at once. With everyone in shock, he told them that the dude was too useless to be executed, as no other isekai anime would take him in any way. So he told him to get the f out, and commanded that the demon lord should appear himself when he wants a meeting. As the troublemaker left, Rimuru told Milam to reveal everything she knows about the demon lord Carrion who the shit face works for. Milam told him that all the demon lords have sworn to stay out of each other's business, and that she could not say shit about them. Rimuru was certain that he could make her spill the beans, and said that since they had become friends, all of her secrets were equally meant to be his own. However, when she could not make up her mind, he told her that he would offer her a gift, so the moron agreed excitedly. And after a moment, she revealed her plan with the other demon lords to use Jelmud in creating a fake demon lord that could be easily killed, as they had grown too bored to do anything else. Rimuru thought he would be their next target for ruining their plan, but Shin told him that they would support him in battle. Meanwhile in the forest, a young group of travelers were heading to the goblin city to meet Rimuru, hoping to start a war. However, they soon began to sense a powerful monster in the forest. Using his farsight skill, the leader, Yaum, realized that some adventurers were about to be eaten by a giant spider. Just then, the useless adventurers began running towards them, and the monster soon appeared from the trees. At once, Yaum commanded his men to stand in formation, and told another to cast a strengthening spell on him. As he prepared to slay the monster, Gobta appeared with his team of rookies. Surprised to see the adventurers, he decided to slay the spider. And in a blink, he had skinned all its meat, 
and they soon began cooking it in a giant pot. Inside Rimoru's private office, he introduced himself to the city knights, and wondered why they came to his city. Gaum thought Rimoru did not deserve an answer, and demanded to know why the entire city treats him like a fucking god when he was just a disgusting slime. Immediately, Shin smacked his head for disrespecting her master, but Rimoru healed him instantly. He said that he wishes to have a good relationship with every human, and hoped they would become partners like with Dwarf Kingdom. With Fuse in shock, Vester told them that he has switched sides to the winning team, and Rimoru told them that they could investigate the city all they want. Having said this, he wondered if other cities had discovered that he slayed the Orc Lord. But Fuse told him that the king had hidden the news from everyone. Relieved by the news, Rimuru told Yam that he wants him to play the hero and take the credit for slaying the Orc Lord. He said that they would consider him less of a threat if everyone thought he supported the Orc Slayer, and Yam thought it made perfect sense. That evening, while watching the beautiful sunset, Yam began telling Rimuru that he had misjudged their city and thought they were all peaceful people. At that moment, he decided to swear his allegiance, saying that he would only obey his commands. Meanwhile in a faraway castle, Demon Lord Clayman welcomed a mysterious goddess, Tyr, into his office, wondering if she successfully spied on the nearby kingdom. She told him that she did, but suggested that they figure out why Milan was choosing to stay with Rimoru. After Clayman agreed, she began telling him that other demon lords had no desire to attack Rimoru's growing city. However, Tyr thought one demon lord was probably plotting a war instead, and intends to revive the Charybdis. Clayman remembered that it was a powerful monster that could destroy their world, so he told her to find the monster's seal, hoping to revive it before anyone else. At that instant, Tyr vanished into the ground, but Clayman wondered what cities he would destroy after gaining control over the monster. Set your heart ablaze, go beyond your limits, and watch this next video.